when you're in Laos or Vietnam, you can't pretend you're not in Laos or Vietnam because you're just immersed in it. It was sort of like nothing else had ever done. Like you can't have that sort of experience and that sort of contact as a tourist. It was just really eye-opening and you know, who can really turn down a field trip to another part of the world. <laughs> Throughout the course I met some amazing students from all over the world and some really great lecturers. <laughs> it was definitely a lot of fun had from the students and the staff, I would say. It was actually a journey of exploration for many of the people who were on the trip and I think they probably all found it extraordinarily rewarding. My name is Rod Keenan, I'm a Professor of Forest and Ecosystem Science at the University of Melbourne and I'm the coordinator of uh, the Master's subject, Forest in the Asia Pacific. We'd start in Ventian in Laos and travel overland along the Mekong through central Laos into Vietnam and stopping at Da Nang. Entering into a new type of educational model with the master's program at the University of Melbourne. Students are increasingly looking for that uh, more direct hands-on exposure to the settings rather than just reading about it in a book or seeing a lecture about it. I mean you remember better if you actually do it. So there's reading materials, there are references, there are literature that they can read, but then we open avenues where they can explore these concepts in reality. Unless you're there with your feet on the ground and your conversations happening with the people who are making these things happen, you're not going to get the depth of experience and understanding that you do from something like this. It's rare that such good opportunities come along where you can go out in the field and spend most of your time in your field and across such a different range of forest products, different plantations, different types of plantations, different countries with different people. It was very helpful for me to go into the field, uh, talk to the people and uh, see the relationship between two countries in the region and also another country from Australia, like not so very far away, but still can contribute to the forestry in the region. You know, the, the subject gave me a, um, a really good overview of, of what is going on in Southeast Asia. Uh, what can I uh, learn from these countries? The good things and the bad things. One of the main things that I took away was that moving into different places, you have to come with a certain openness to, to um, learn about the different dynamics rather than to expect that you know everything already. I think it's quite easy to sit um, in, in Victoria and say, you know, we really need to think about how we're planting trees, we can't just be cutting down forests, we can't just be, you know, ruining the environment. But what I, I think I took from this course was that that's a luxury that you get to think about when you come from a wealthy place. So you don't, you know, we don't need to rely on our forests for food and for for our just general incomes. You can't really have that viewpoint of just focusing on your own little patch anymore because what you do here has an implication across the borders as well and I think that's a big thing in forestry and a part of doing a forestry course is that you go and do, uh, yeah, you go to, you travel to different places and it's fun as well so yeah, <laughs> it's worth doing. We start off the trip with a visit to the National University of Laos where the staff and students there put on a, um, what they, it's called a bachi, where you bring your spirits together and make sure that your, your spirits are all quite comfortable and satisfied and within your person. It's not something you do very often in our culture is to say to someone, I wish you happiness, I wish you health, or, or think about 
what you'd like for them for the year ahead. But um, yeah, that was a really beautiful part of the course, I think. It's a really nice way of introducing the students to the fact that they're in a different culture and that um, there's maybe some different ways of thinking about these things. And the other thing we do is um, each year pick up two Lao students from the National University there um, and they come with us for the two weeks. Being engaged with uh, local students like Odd and, and Tola, that was a really good experience. Yeah. We become really good friends. It was really, really cool to have some local expertise and perspective. Like spending a lot of time with Tola was a really, really valu valuable thing. and. Um, yeah, one of the best experiences from the trip, I think. I think it would be fair to say a number of the students who came on, this, on the study tour would have gone with certain views about developing countries and their obligation to the environment. I think they probably came away with much more complicated understandings of what that means and about where we fit as the consumers of those products. We are all the end users of timber products, but not a lot of us are exposed to the entire supply chain. And these students, they have the opportunities to look at plantation, factories, wholesaler, retailers, and have these sort of comprehensive picture of what's happening at each of these steps along the way. There was like a massive diversity in the sort of things that we went and looked at. There were times we were sitting in government offices and other times speaking to um, local people that were making charcoal for a living. For a lot of students, they probably never thought of forest as um, shelter, as um, a safety net. Um, as a risk management strategy for a lot of people. Developing a deeper understanding of the way in which um, people live their lives in the region is as important as well uh, for a more general understanding of, of, of our, our home on the planet. So many more people work and live in the forest and grow the forest. For instance, in Vietnam you've got 80 million farmers and a lot of them are growing plantations on their two acres of land. It involves millions and millions of people in Vietnam and other parts of Asia. It's a huge industry, it's, there's so much labour um, that you don't see here in Australia because we've got much more mechanised systems. They churn out products for people to use and it's not, you know, they're wearing thongs and they're not wearing mouth coverings and it kind of puts that in context of there's people that are making all these products for us. It's not just someone over there making it, it's, like, it's these people in this factory so it sort of, yeah, puts it into perspective for sure. We travel in minibuses with about six or eight people in each bus. So we try and use that time to, um, to focus on a range of different things that are going on in the region around people and forests. We had poverty, social, economics, um, environment, governance with the five different buses. And I think this was one of the best formal structures that we had in, in terms of facilitating the learning that we were doing. It really helped to dig down into what you were learning. You know, we'd made lots of stops and it's you're meeting a lot of different people really quickly and, and going to different places. So on the bus, it was, it was an opportunity to let your thoughts kind of develop and just discuss it with the other students and with the tutor on the bus. It's a really good way to connect with between each other. You know, social networking is what actually uh, is, uh, is necessary, so this is the best way. We need to talk, we need to watch ourselves, we need to see, we need to share a ex different kind of experience. And we move the people around every couple of days so they're getting exposed to discussion about those different issues as um, they move through the, the 12 days of the program. What I noticed over the course of the subject is that like those discussions also weren't confined to those buses because it's sort of hard to separate things. 
I mean, it's called a forestry subject, but it's about way more than that. The structure of the course, from an assessment point of view, is that the, the students do some pre-reading beforehand and then they have to write uh, 1,500 words on that to consolidate that reading. The assignment that we had to complete beforehand, I think, gave everyone a, a much more level playing field, so everyone was sort of on the same page in regards to the basics of forestry in the region, which was a good way to start. And then the students get a chance to do uh, a major assignment for half the marks, which um, allows them to explore an issue that's of interest to them. The way we learned in this course, in the full two weeks, was awesome. While we were there, we had the reflective journal and the role plays, and yeah, both in different ways allowed you to kind of extend your thinking. So the reflective journal was, I guess, in a more personal way and I think it allowed you to make connections with other people really well. It was very good because all of the students are going to come back together and we got a little time to reflect back on the knowledge that we got. Writing down you know, your feelings and what you think about these things is really important because what they're seeing is, all, is quite confronting um, often. I think people need to have a mechanism for processing some of that internally and, uh, and learning a bit more about themselves um, by thinking about how they're reacting to those situations. And the role plays I just found really fun. I was, before we left Australia I was like, seems a little silly, like role plays, like this is a master's course, but um, it does, it allows you to um, I guess express what you're learning in a different way and I think that's really important in life. And you know, closing this subject with such a you know a funny and really um, interpersonal way makes people you know to be really smart and be uh, creative, and that's incredible. Yeah, we encourage the students to use humor and to be playful in the way that they engage uh, in a couple of the role plays. Because I guess my view is that the solutions to many of these problems actually rely uh, on human imagination. Going to Laos and Vietnam and doing this sort of stuff is just the next level. You can't, I guess, escape the learning. There's something valuable about seeing something happen on the ground. Um, so sort of getting out of a classroom setting and out of a textbook and actually speaking to people um, and seeing things for yourself and being able to sort of make your own decisions. I would say hands-on is always better. You know, seeing and watching and actually sharing this experience with the people and also watching by yourself what's going on. Sitting in a lecture theatre is good, but you always learn a hell of a lot more if you actually go out into the field and you see it and you just start noticing things and it's a really great form of education. When I look back on the six years that I spent doing the Masters, it was by far and away the most interesting subject I did and it was the most different subject I've ever done in any university study. Um, it, it is really incomparable. You know, what, what, else, what else can you ask for, for a subject? Mm -hmm.